Please be seated. My father had a thing for Buicks when I was growing up. And there was a dealership in St. Charles, a nearby town about 10 miles away. That's the Buick dealership. And he used to love to go there when we needed a, a new used car. And there was always a Buick of some sort. Buick Sabre, Electra 225, and I always thought, these are the coolest cars. Even the Electra 225 had electric windows. Amazing. But I remember before that, we had a 1967 American Motors Rambler. And Dad bought that brand new, and he was so excited about that little car. And we drove it. And I remember sitting on his lap, coming home from church, and steering the car. I was about eight, seven or eight. He let me steer the car. Didn't have power steering, so I just figured you'd hold the wheel straight, and it would just go. But I found that if you don't kind of adjust as you're moving along, you kind of go onto the one side of the road or the other. And one thing we didn't have, which I found out later was a luxury, was FM radio. We had an AM radio in that car. We had an automatic transmission, but we did not have air conditioning or an FM radio. And I thought my friend had, a, had air conditioning in his car, and I thought that was the neatest thing. But now we look at our cars, and they've got everything. Now I'm, even my Subaru has got how many miles that you have left on the tank of gas. I don't know how true it is. It tells you everything, the time, temperature, uh, miles you've gone, how long it's going to take to get where you're going, uh, how long you've been driving in the car, everything, plus electric windows and door locks and alarm systems and things. Come a long way, haven't they? I can't imagine. But then I, I passed by on the way back from uh, Door County, this little dealership that deals in classic cars. Neat. I even saw a, uh, what was it, a Corvair. I haven't seen one of those for years. It's how things have changed, huh? Making all things new, I guess it's something to say with, uh, you know, the Revelation text we have. God making everything new. Not saying that God's creating a new kingdom, some other planet or some other heavenly ethereal body, but God is bringing the kingdom here to this place. And he's not scrapping the old for the new, not trading us in for a newer model, making all things new. The city, new city, New Jerusalem is coming in as a city. City represents human, human community. That's how God will usher in the new era, through community. I like it when Peter is... <clears throat> has his visions. My first song was, Peter has a vision? That's kind of interesting. How Peter has changed, right? From simple fisherman to now he's a preacher, teacher, healer. Now he has a vision of all these things. All these old ways of, you know, like a curtain falling down from heaven on the four corners. You've got all these animals you're not supposed to eat because they're not kosher, or they're not clean. And then God tells him, go ahead and eat it. Now, is this a trick? Are you trying to trick me, God? No. God wasn't trying to trick him at all. He was saying something new. Peter, what I've created is good and clean. If I say, go ahead and eat it, go ahead and eat it. Now, I was reading that, and, and when I was, as Rich was reading this lesson, I thought, you know, I could put myself in this too. You know, I looked and saw, the, let's see, okay, um, there was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked, and I saw broccoli, I saw lutefisk, I saw Vegemite, which is an Australian stuff I tried a long time ago. And I heard a voice saying, get up, bread, and eat. And I said, no way, and I still won't. But God has made all things new. And Peter's getting first a revelation of that how things have changed in our lifetimes, and it's changing faster. Isn't that right? Things are speeding up, sometimes beyond our control. Listening to the radio and obsolescence, you know, it's planned obsolescence in some ways. You buy a computer, it's already obsolete. There's something new around the horizon already. Wow. But I like my, you know, old computer. Well, that's fine. But in terms of how life is, Life is changing. Life is becoming new in a lot of different ways. 
I'm becoming new in a lot of different ways. I can't do the things I used to do when I was 20 years old or 16 years old. I can't eat like I'm a farm boy at 16 anymore. If I do, then I'm going to be 345 pounds. And I can't do that. I have to watch and see how God is making me new every day. Physically, I can't do the things I used to do, and that's hard for me to understand and hard for me to comprehend and accept sometimes. On medication for the first time, oh my goodness gracious. And I'm only 47. But God is making me new in different other ways that I don't even know how about. Five years ago, I became a father. That changes things a little bit, don't you think? I saw Nick and Heather Wood with their new baby this morning. They've been two weeks as parents or three weeks as parents. That's something new. Now they've got something to look forward to. They've got to think in new and different ways now. They've got to start eating broccoli and lutefisk. Not me, but they do. Peter has a, a wonderful way of saying things too that kind of puts it where it's at. And Peter's kind of a good apostle because there's no nonsense about Peter. Hey, I just saw this vision. This is what it says. I can understand that. You know, even God told me I can do this. Who am I to question God? I'm not God and I've proven it time and again, haven't I? And we've seen that happen. We've seen even in this church body in the 70s, was it? Women became ordained and became pastors. Well, that's different, isn't it? Now some of my best friends are pastors in different churches around this area. That's changed. Civil rights movement, that's changed. Something new. Our world is getting smaller, isn't it, with computers and internet and the way we can fly around the earth and no time flat. Communication is an all-time high, an all-time low, too. But God is making us all new in ways we haven't even comprehended. Back in the 70s when we were driving the Buick LeSabre, I would have never comprehended on being able to email a friend in Sweden or Norway or Africa or wherever instantly without having to put a stamp on it or several stamps on it. Wow, that's amazing. But some things always remain true. We're made new creatures. We're made new creations, even sometimes without our wanting it. But we're made new. And God blesses us always, sometimes in ways we don't even realize either, until someone says, you realize that this is happening or, or that you're this way or you've got these gifts now that you never thought you had before. Oh, you know what? You're right. I never expected that. God is making all of us new. God starts out with a, a clean slate and begins creating good things. And these things change and grow. We have the capacity to grow. Sometimes not when we want to. Sometimes kicking and screaming we do. But we grow nonetheless. Our decisions are made sometimes good, sometimes bad. But we grow, we learn from those things. 